News First, face to face with Shalom Benedict. I will sorry for you. Hello there, a very good evening and welcome to another edition of Face to Face. We're joined by parliamentarian Nalaka Gudaheva here with us to discuss the current political situation in the country. Much is happening here in Sri Lanka, Mr. Gudaheva. Thank you very much for taking time off your busy schedule and joining us this evening. Thank you very much for inviting. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Nalaka Gudaheva, now you entered parliament at the top of the list in the Gampa district. Um, first questions first now as uh, the person who topped the list in correct me if I'm wrong but the most populous district in Sri Lanka with the most amount of residents uh, they voted you in are you being given a fair opportunity to represent the constituents who voted for you who placed their trust in you because Currently, there is a huge issue on the mandate of the government, the mandate of parliament. Now, you undoubtedly came into power, uh, of course, with a majority consent of a, a high number of people from the most populous district, as I said before. Are you being given an opportunity to represent your constituents fairly? No, I don't think so, because my, the people in Gampa voted for me thinking that I will be holding a responsible portfolio where I could contribute to the economy. Mm. Because economic management was the biggest challenge at that time. In fact, my expertise is also in that because I'm mm. a PhD in economics. Uh, but I was put into a ministry uh, completely outside that uh, purview, and I had to function even without a secretary. Was it was it fisheries? What uh, that is uh, UDA. But UDA, I, I was yeah. the state minister UDA. Okay. But I was the only uh, state minister who did not have a secretary. Mm. I was asked to work with the. Cabinet Minister Secretary, okay. that is uh, <coughs> Honorable Mahindra Rajapaksha at that time. Hmm. So I don't think I was given the right opportunity hmm. to serve my people. So a few years down the line, since you were elected, of course, many things have changed. Uh, Sri Lanka experienced times as if uh, that it has never before experienced in the pendency of, uh, uh, well, a at least after independence here in uh, Sri Lanka. These days, uh, the debates are going on on the expenditure heads of various ministries um, and various other institutions and one thing that really caught my mind uh, was the expenditure heads on former presidents. Now I have the facts and figures but before I get into all of this and I'm pretty sure our viewers out there also might be curious uh, because many of our viewers uh, if not many people in Sri Lanka now as a result of the tax reforms and the reduction in the tax bracket have to pay taxes. So it is this tax money, it is your tax money that is being spent in the millions, in the millions, I will get to the figures in just a bit, in the millions on these former presidents. So, um, Mr. Godeheva, now you said your, your background is in economics. What is the logic behind maintaining former presidents, spending millions to maintain former presidents in a country like Sri Lanka that is bankrupt? What's the logic? Uh, first of all, once a president retires, um, he's supposed to be in retirement. But there are certain requirements that he may have to maintain his lifestyle, his security, etc., etc. So the government usually put aside a certain amount of money, hmm. which is something that the parliament has to decide, hmm. uh, which is not uh, uncommon even in the other countries. Hmm. So I think um, uh, paying a retirement uh, allowance, uh, providing security and other things, I think conceptually fine. Hmm. Amount is something that can debate. Hmm. So, um, just to be uh, clear on the amounts that have been allocated, um, I'm uh, during the budget, and this was passed, by the way, in Parliament, 15.67 million rupees has been allocated for former President uh, Chandrika Kumarathunga, uh, 6.82 million rupees uh, for the wife of former President uh, Premadasa, uh, Mrs. Premadasa, and 29.17 million rupees for former President Mahindra Rajapaksa, 29.17 million rupees for former president Maithripala Sirisena and the same 29.17 million rupees for former president Gotabe Rajapaksa. Now, your logic was that once a president retires, they can't, um, of course, go and work uh, just like you and I. Uh, they have to maintain a certain lifestyle as well. And in essence, they are retired. So let's leave the retired presidents out. Currently, Former President Mahindra Rajapaksa and former President Maitri Pala Sirisena are both members of parliament. And to the best of my knowledge, both of them 
are drawing the salaries for parliamentarians both of them are enjoying the perks and privileges of parliamentarians and both of them have also now been allocated close to 30 million rupees as benefits for former presidents. So what's the logic in this? There's no logic in that. In fact, I, um, I, I, I puzzled on two things. Number one, uh, why is this retirement uh, payment or money allocation is different from president to president? Hmm. All those guys are retired. If hmm. they're retired, there has to be a retirement package, which is debatable for, in, uh, for if you want, but it has to be a fixed amount for all the past presidents. Second one is, if somebody comes back to the parliament, hmm. uh, they, where they enjoy uh, the perks and the benefits of parliamentarians, mm. uh, I think that's something that is questionable. I'm totally in agreement with you on that. So, we don't see really a voice being raised regarding these matters. I mean, especially during the expenditure head or, or the debate on the expenditure head uh, on uh, this allocation of money for former presidents. I know it's not uh, it's not a, a serious allocation. I mean, uh, the figures are there as a as a percentage of GDP as well. Uh, but, uh, however. This money is again the money of the general public and, and whatever, given the situation right now in Sri Lanka, whatever, even a single rupee is extremely, extremely important. There wasn't much opposition against this. I mean, the only opposition that I saw was a few members of the SJB, maybe uh, one or two, three out of the three members of the JJB. Um, your voices weren't really heard in Parliament. No, it was uh, it was debated. Various people spoke, uh, but if you look at this, I told you that the, the dif dif differences mm. uh, between the presidents. Mm. Uh, one reason could be some of the recent presidents mm. may have more uh, security requirements, mm. uh, bigger security con contingencies. Right. And when you add up those numbers, probably you come to the the amount. I think what we should not be debating is the amount. We should be debating the principle. Mm. As you said, I think once a president retires, he has to be retired. If he comes back, then he, he can't be a president. Mm. He's, he's, he's another citizen, another MP, another uh, parliamentarian. Mm. That is where the question comes. Mm. So, Mr. Godeheva, now you initially were was a part of the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna. Now you've broken off. Uh, you've formed uh, the uh, Freedom People's Congress. In fact, in our chat before, you're the leader of that party. Um, and no, no, that, no, no, not, not, the no, no, not that, not that. We were referring to some other. Party. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So the Freedom People's Congress is a, is a collection of uh, several parliamentarians that broke away from the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna. Now. You are still elected representatives of the people. Uh, you have not retired from politics, so I presume you have the best interest of the people uh, at heart still. Definitely. So <laughs> what's your plan moving uh, to the future? Of course, there's a presidential election next year, parliamentary election next year. Uh, what is your bid to the people? See, uh, I uh, never came into politics because I wanted to. I was kind of pushed into politics. I was a professional who was working, serving the government after retirement from my private sector. And at one point, I was invited by former President uh, Gotabi Rajapaksha mm. and uh, former President Mahindra Rajapaksha both to come and uh, get into politics. They actually proposed a national list. I said, if you want me to come to policy, let me contest and come, mm. which is which is which is the fair way of doing that. Mm. And where I got uh, the others would have praised. Uh -huh. uh, preferred coming in through the national list because it's a guaranteed seat. Yes, I, 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 I was, I wasn't mind taking a risk mm. because I was not so keen on that. Mm. So, but I contested. I had a very hard campaign, and I got three hundred twenty-five thousand votes, which was the third highest in the mm. country at that time. But then, once you get that vote, you are responsible for the people. Mm. Once you get that vote, you can't run away. You can't say you are not interested in politics. Mm. At least during that term, I have a responsibility. Mm. So when the, my government that I supported, I, I was part of, was not doing the right thing that in my mind, hmm. I had to quit. So that is how uh, we became independent, we can't officially quit, hmm. but we became independent. We declared in independent myself and few others and we said, okay, we are not in agreement in the direction that you are going. Hmm. Let us sit in the parliament as independent MPs and uh, decide how we vote, how we talk uh, case by case. So, Mr. Godeheva, it's it's important that we learn from the mistakes of the past because uh, we've seen the same thing kind of repeating in, in, in Sri Lanka. 
for example, uh, what happened with the SLPP government uh, had an absolute majority, two-thirds majority, first time elected uh, under the 1978 constitution. And then in just a few years, in just a matter of few years, came crashing down. Same thing happened with uh, J.R. Jayawardena's government uh, back in the 70s. Um, so it's it's a repetition. So it's, it's important that we, um, although in schools we only learn the history of the kings, it's important that uh, we understand the mistakes that we've made so that we don't make these same mistakes in the future. So as, as far as the government that you represented, mm -hmm. the government under Gotha Biraj Baksa, where when did it all start going south? Because for the longest time, we were given assurances that no Sri Lanka is not going to go bankrupt. In 2020, uh, Dr. Harsha De Silva said that we need to go to the IMF. People laughed at him. Uh, certain even members who are uh, now independent with you, uh, there was criticism against what he said. Uh, but today we find ourselves in a mess. So where did it all start going south? First of all, I think Jaya Jayadana's government lasted 17 years, so it didn't come down as fast as, <laughs> as this. <laughs> Maybe the people were more sensible and, and there's more access to social media, so right. you really can't uh, yes. play too much behind yeah. the so scenes. Com coming, coming into this government, particularly if you're talking about uh, uh, former President Gotabi Rajapaksha's government, when the government came into power, we all knew, at least we knew, hmm. that there's going to be an uh, economic ca catastrophe. Hmm. Because the numbers were there, okay. it, it was very clear there's going to be a crisis, and that was the biggest challenge that we had to handle. But due to some unfortunate reason, President Gotabe Rajapaksha, after getting elected to the uh, presidency, hmm. decided to go back to the same economic team which contributed to this. In my opinion, there are two teams which contributed to this crisis mainly. One is uh, President Mahindra Rajapaksha's uh, economic management team. 2005-2015 period. So you're referring of to course, Jai Sundara. Of course, and Ranil Kumasinghe's, uh, President uh, Prime Minister Ranil Kumasinghe's economic management team, 2015-2019. Because if you look at the ills, both these have contributed. So then, uh, President Gotabi Rajapaksha was part of Rajapaksha mm. uh, regime. He went back to the same economic management team who mm. contributed to the crisis. So they could never the crisis. That's what happened. Hmm. So but there is much criticism, I think even the Supreme Court determination on this matter had, had, had uh, referred in detail to this massive tax cut. Now of course, as a member of the general public, when the government comes and says, look, everything is hunky-dory, we can give you massive tax cuts, there is no person in uh, any society, any reasonable society, who would stand up and say, no, I want to pay more taxes. because. We believe the government, we believe that everything is all right and people will accept the taxes. So when politicians come now, members of the SLPP come out before the media now and say, look here, when we gave you our tax cuts, you all didn't object, you all didn't say no, don't give us tax cuts. So you are to blame too. So I don't really buy that argument. Um, speaking on the tax cuts, what was the thinking there? How did that decision come about? And how did it come about so abruptly? So this is something that I have to explain very clearly to the general public because when we were developing our manifesto where even I was part, hmm. we proposed in principle hmm. that the taxes have to be brought down and it has to be simplified because 2015-2019 uh, uh, government had increased taxes massively. Right? Hmm. That was too much at that time. However, the, the particular tax cut that was introduced mm. was not something that came from our team. Mm. It came from this gentleman that uh, you referred to a little while mm. ago. It came last minute. When when those numbers were presented to us, I, I flatly refused to put that into the manifesto. I walked away and President Gotabi Rajapaksa, if he gets an opportunity, will acknowledge that uh, Dr. Godeva never agreed to this because that was too much. You know, you are trying to solve a problem and you went to an extreme and then they went ahead and introduced that. Let's say that's fine. Mm. But when you realize that things are going wrong, you had adequate time to correct that because there was 2021 budget, mm. there was 2022 budget. And then it's, not like, it's not like tax reforms only come during a budget, like we do it we randomly do that. any time in so the year. I, I think where I find fault with them is, one, of course, too much tax cuts. Second, only why didn't they correct it? I mean, they had all the powers and the re excuses that could have been explained to people to adjust it. Mm. That is where the mistake was. Mm. So, uh, Mr. Godeheva, now, of course, moving forward, uh, we're all looking at um, what can we do next because people in Sri Lanka have suffered. People in Sri Lanka have suffered like they've never, ever suffered before in this beautiful country. Uh, and we are trying to find a way out of this. But 
there is a lack of trust. I mean, I personally don't know who to trust because so many people have lied to us so many times and then they are currently running um, the government. Uh, they're refusing to hold elections, uh, saying that there is no money. Uh, but however, there seems to apparently be enough money uh, to <laughs> spend so many millions on maintaining former presidents. So who do we trust? Mr. Godahev. See, if you look at the right, the problem right now, the problem is we have got a golden opportunity mm. after the crisis that we went through, Aragal layer, change mm. of leadership, all those things, mm. to make a change. Mm. We can, we, there's, there's, a, there's a situation where government can take hard decisions. Mm. That's why I call it a golden opportunity. Mm. But I think the current government is missing that opportunity by not focusing on the implementation proper. Mm. Right? Now, Look at the cabinet, right? Hmm. The, ca the, the way the cabinet uh, portfolios are assigned, hmm. uh, the, 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 the health ministry is the same as the industrial minister, two critical ministries. Then uh, tourism minister today was not even present in the parliament. Probably he must be busy somewhere. He's also right? the sports minister. We, we, were, we were debating his, his, uh, expenditure. Uh, his expenditure. And the, he was not there whole day. I, I was there till about 4 o'clock. He was not there. So how can you expect these people to be responsible for the implementation? So I think what is what the problem we have is more than anything is an implementation problem. Mm. So therefore, I believe the solution is at least next year we must go for an election. Mm. Let people decide whom they want to uh, put in place in power. Mm. And those people, whoever comes to power, must put the best team to manage that and implement the strategy. But because all of us can talk about strategies, policies, <coughs> that is not the difficult thing. Mm. Difficult thing is implementation. But when you are the wrong guys, to implement, nothing is going to happen. But, but Dr. Godeheva, now how Sri Lankan politics work, mm. at least, is now people are a little bit more uh, politically intelligent, politically literate after everything that happened during the past few years. But how Sri Lankan politics works is um, you get your politicians, your you know, career politicians coming and advocating for a leader. And the people select among these leaders based on who they trust mm. the most. Now the biggest problem is, I mean, even in your case, Dr. Godeheva, uh, you fought tooth and nail to bring Gotabe Rajapaksa into power. 6.9 million people in Sri Lanka believed you and voted for Gotabe Rajapaksa, brought him into power. Then you all said, no, presidency is not enough. We need a majority power in parliament as well. And you got another parliamentary mandate, two thirds. And look what has happened to the country. So. To a person who is seated in front of that TV now and watching this, why should they believe you? I would say it's very easy because all you have to do is you look at the past of the people, the, the, what, what people did, not just what we all, the mistakes that we all did. Hmm. I mean, in, in, in 2019, we expected the president to come and deliver a manifesto which was present to the people and accepted, mm. but that was not delivered. Mm. Instead, different things were done. Mm. A team that was never part of that uh, manifesto development came and took control of the economy. That is what went wrong. Not the original ideas. Mm. Those people who came up with those original ideas and back Gotabe Rajapaksha were helpless. Mm. So just because of that, are you going to reject them? Is it their fault or people who are in power? Secondly, take look at us. Right. Now we, we came into parliament, I was a state minister for almost uh, two years and a parliamentary afternoon, look at us and say, have hmm. these people robbed? Hmm. Have these people done anything wrong? Have these people not delivered within the limited powers given to them? So that is how the assessment has to be done. Hmm. If, you, if you hang on to a mistake that everybody did hmm. and say, look, we don't want all these people hmm. and look for somebody new, that's also fine. Hmm. if you can find the right people hmm. but the mistake is you might find a completely wrong set of people hmm. who have absolutely no clue hmm. how to run the government if you try to do so so i think we have to remember always we have to pick from what is available you can always pick the right people if you use the right criteria hmm. but today when you when when it comes to parliament i can very confidently say what will happen at the next election hmm. next election will be won by people who can spend money because people are finding it so difficult to live today. People will just vote for people who can spend money on them. I mean, that is, that is what I see eventually, right? Mm. So money will eventually win and the rogues will come back, right? So all these theories we talk about picking the right people, I don't know whether it's going to happen. Hmm. So you believe that if, um, say, for example, those who were 
responsible for this economic crisis and you know have have ill-gotten gains if they do uh, spend enough money they can come back into power at the next election is that what you say that can happen that can happen at at, at, at election unfortunately in this country uh, look at the people who people rejected in 2015 hmm. people who rejected before 2019 people said these people are rogues never bring them back but how many people came back but Mr. Godeva, you need mm -hmm. to understand the, the, the thinking behind that. I mean, people just didn't vote for Gotabe Rajapaksa and the SLPP government um, just because, uh, you know, they rejected the uh, government of good governance. There was an Easter Sunday attack, which scared the people. The people were scared. I mean, I was scared. I was wondering what is happening in a country that just ended a 30-year-long war. Does this mean another 30, another 60 years? Of war so people were reminded of that fear and now <laughs> information is coming to light that many of these people knew about this attack they didn't take action even former president Maitri Palasiri Sena was um, uh, held to book by the Supreme Court uh, and uh, even Sri Lankans now understand and believe that politicians were behind this attack so that was a real turning point so at least on that point uh, with regard to the government of the SLPP, I don't think it was just money. It was fear that uh, drove the people to vote for the same people who they initially rejected in 2015. Would you agree with me? Yes, I think uh, more than economy or anything, we knew about the pro economic problem. General people, general public didn't know. Nobody told right, us. Right? right. Uh, <laughs> right. I mean, I mean, <laughs> Parliament is vested with uh, yeah. all financial no, powers. Right. No, you're absolutely right. At that time, the main bigger concern for security and there to be fair fair by former president Gotabe Rajapaksa he brought that uh, stability back I mean there was no security threat as such thereafter where they went wrong was on the economic front but then again Mr. Godeheva um, what about the investigations into the April 21st attacks what's the status of those why were the teams changed where are answers to these mm. questions I mean 250 Sri Lankans mm. died there both governments are wrong, President Gotabe Rajapaksha's government as well as Prime Minister Ranil Singh's government and current Ra Pr President Ranil Singh's government. All, all are. But they're all together now. All, all they, are they blamed <laughs> each other. So, so well, my, my contention is, Mr. Godeheva, so either these, either the, there, there are two groups. Mm -hmm. One group is blaming the other, and the other group is blaming them. Now both of them are together. So either both of them are liars or, 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 or they're actually responsible for this, or they are both. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm also puzzled why uh, this is kept under the carpet when there are repeated requests mm. uh, for investigations. Mm. The the, may, may, the 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 point here mm. is when pe general public suspects something, it is always good to mm. make an extra effort and clear their minds. Mm. But otherwise, this will always be in their minds, which is not a good thing. So, Mr. Godehevar, again, now moving forward at the next year, now you said that you identified certain um, missteps uh, of the government of Gotabe Rajapaksa, but you came out of the government of Gotabe Rajapaksa quite late into the economic crisis. So, it's important that point where you maintain that connection with the general public and stay true to the general public and keep the general public informed of what is really going on. So come the next election, of course, you will align yourself with the candidate contesting for the presidential election. So do you think that if you came forward a little sooner, things could have been better? Because mm -hmm. people were never told. I mean, until mm -hmm. the first installment, that 500 million US dollar installment was paid uh, to several bondholders mm -hmm. in Sri Lanka mm -hmm. in January uh, 2022. Mm -hmm. Everybody said that things are going great. At which point did I come out? I was the first cabinet minister to resign when I was given the cabinet portfolio. Mm. I resigned before May 9th. When I was appointed the May cabinet. May 9th? No, but, no, but that is. Before that, I was not in the cabinet. Okay. I was appointed cabinet on the 24th of April. Mm. Two days later, I gave my resignation, right? Because I said, I'm not in agreement with this. Then the president requested until President Mahindraj, uh, Prime Minister Mahindraj Pai resigns and the cabinet is dissolved, remain in the cabinet mm. as a favor. Mm. So I remain in the cabinet. So I I am one person who refused the cabinet portfolio. I said other people crossed over. Mm. People will continue to cross over mm. for cabinet portfolios. Even when uh, Prime Minister uh, Ranil Kumar Singh asked me to come and support him, mm. knowing that he would win, I didn't. 
because I was not in agreement with policy. So I believe in certain things. So do you I think, do you, think you, you stepped out at the right point of time? No, before that, had I stepped out, what would have happened? What would have happened? Uh, I, I, I would have been a lonely voice which would have been there for one week or two weeks. Everybody would have forgotten. See, in the parliament, for you to even to get a time to speak, the, the party has to allocate. Hmm. People think you can just get up and speak. You can't. Right? You wait and see what will happen to uh, Minister Roshan Rana Singh after a while. Right? So, so is, that is, what is, is, that is, is that the same thing that's happening to Minister Roshan Rana Singh now? No, even, even to the, him, that is what will happen. Because once you come out, you can't control your parliament to speak in time. You can't have access to media the way you, way, way you public would expect. So people say, why didn't you come out and tell this to the people? At that time, nobody, nobody would have listened anyway, right? And uh, we would have made an impact. I was a state minister. I was not handling economy. So I was not in a position to make a, a statement about economy. Nobody would have cared. Hmm. So, uh, Dr. Godeheva, now, after contributing so much to bring President Gotabe Rajapaksa into power, are you still telling me that you weren't in a position to sit down with him and say, look, this is wrong, and to convince your team, the team that you ran with, you weren't able to do that. You remember there was an organization that backed him, mm. right? I think for Vyatmaga. Vyatmaga. He never met that team after he won. The first mm. time he met the team was in 2022, I think somewhere in uh, January or February. So you're saying this is when after he was elected into power? Yes. Before he yes. was elected into power, he had constant meetings he had constant with Vyatmaga. Meeting. After that, he was taken over by a different, different team. No? We had, I, I went and pleaded with him, saying, you meet these people, but they have views. So then he called about 700 people to uh, presidential uh, palace and um, had a meeting with them, but not everybody came, only half of them came, because people were fed up by that time. Mm. So that is what happened. Unfo he had a very good team in my opinion I still think they are a very good team they were genuine people they cared for the country mm. they want to make a difference that is why they backed President Gotabe Rajapaksha President Gotabe Rajapaksha is also uh, in my opinion is an honest guy he, he there are no accusation about him robbing or anything but mm. he started getting advice from the wrong people and a very few people small clan mm. started controlling him that is where things went wrong mm. so moving forward I think I distinctly remember this. Uh, it was President Gotabe Rajapaksa himself who said that you elected us into power because you were not happy with how the government was run. Uh, and if we fail, do not elect those same people back into power. Don't continue this vicious cycle. Break it. If we fail, break it. So do you still stand by those words? Do you think that this vicious cycle of you know, a group being elected into power then them failing, the opposing group taking power, they fail, then the first group that fail comes back, takes power, and this keeps going on and on. Do you think it's time that we break this? See, let's be practical. I always believe you have to pick from what, what is available. Right? Now, however much you may come and say, look, you know, these professionals, educated people, come and get involved in politics, they're not going to come. They're happy doing their jobs. They're happy living their lives. Because politics is also not an easy thing. After I got involved in politics, I realized how hard it is. So a lot of people are very happy theorizing from outside, not taking the responsibility. So, but then that, that is why I say you have to pick from those who take the responsibility. Pick from those people who take the risk. Today, politics is a risk. You can, how, your house can get burned. Hmm. Right? Your assets can get destroyed. Hmm. There's such a risk, so you don't think it is a, it's a fun game. There are two types of people in politics today. One group genuinely want to do something. They don't exploit the system, hmm. right? Whilst there's another group of people who come to power to earn money, rob, uh, enjoy enjoy the power, etc. But the general public put both these parties together and call everybody a rogue. So then you can differentiate. Today, if you look at the current parliament, do you honestly think that everybody is a rogue? I would say no. There are many, many honest people. Hmm. There are many honest people who don't even uh, take their uh, genuine... But what, you call, but what do you call an honest person who aligns himself with a rogue while knowing that the person he's aligning with is a rogue. Now, how do you define alignment? How do you define supporting. alignment? Supporting. Supporting. Now, take our, our situation. We are not supporting. We have, we have, we have quit the government. We have quit our positions. No, no, I'm, I'm just saying yeah. at any point of but, time, at yeah. any point of time, what do you call a, an honest person who supports a person who is... No, I don't... Who, I, he, who I, he himself I, believes is... No, I, do, I don't think honest people are supporting any.
dishonest people hmm. right they are, everybody is an individual right hmm. but the problem i think sad thing in this country hmm. is people are unable to differentiate hmm. Hmm. people are unable to differentiate the good guys from the bad guys hmm. as a result by trying to put everybody into the bad basket hmm. you are left with nobody eventually that's the problem I think one thing is for sure that the people are extremely confused as to what's really going on in Sri Lanka and 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 part of the reason for that confusion is the lack of transparency on uh, the part of many governments that have come and gone and also to a certain degree uh, a certain level of complacency on the general public uh, when it comes to critically analyzing the things that the leaders of our country tell us not everything that they say is true uh the beautiful picture the dream future that they paint for you is not true so the only way that we can remedy this of course is by voting smart at the next election and i believe for as long as 8 years as i've been at news first i've been um requesting the people of course to vote intelligently and i'm pretty sure you'd echo the same sentiments to the general public uh, because that is the only way that sri lanka can truly prosper and live up to its potential. Thank you very much parliamentary and Alaka Godeheva for joining us on our program today. Thank you very much to all our viewers out there for tuning in to another episode of Face to Face. Until we meet again, take care and God bless.